what is the asset that most people are trying to protect? Most middle class families. What is the asset they're trying to protect? The house. The house is the major asset that most people want to protect. In fact, your typical client, my typical client, have, have two types of assets. And of course, there's many other varieties. But most of my clients come in and say, look, I have a house and I have a retirement plan. Because it's hard to live here on Long Island. It's an expensive place to live. And we, the four savings is what we end up with if we, after we educate a few kids and live here on the island. And what do you, four savings is there, they took the money out of, my, out of my paycheck every month and they put it in my 401k and it built up over the years and I paid off my mortgage little by little over 30 years and now I've got a house paid off and I've got an IRA. Typical client. Well, that particular client doesn't have to worry about the IRA because IRAs are exempt from Medicaid. It's only the house. So typically, my clients are coming in and say, I want, let's, I want to save my house. If they have other assets they want to protect, then of course we, we deal with that as well. But I want to start with the house here. So let me explain how, the, how, how we do this and protect the house. The house, let's say you bought it years ago. Uh, for, uh, use your own numbers. I'm just going to put some numbers on the table to get you to understand it. Let's say you paid $50,000 for your house years ago. What you paid for your house in tax law, does anyone know what that's called? That's called your basis, your basis. That's where we start from, the base, okay, the basis. Now, you paid 50, that's your original basis, but through the years, new roof, new bathroom, new kitchen, new uh, siding, uh, new uh, a pool, whatever you, you put into the house, let's say you put another $100,000 into the house through the years. So you paid 50 and then you really paid another 100, so you paid $150,000 into this house now and your basis is now 50,000. Okay, so now the house is worth 400, let's say, and the difference between your basis and what it's worth is the profit, or what we call what? Capital gain, that's right, that's the capital gain. And in this case, it would be $250,000 of capital gain. All right, good. And if you sold your house and you had $250,000 of capital gain, would you pay any tax? No, because everybody gets an exclusion of how much? on the sale of your principal residence. 250 per person, so as a couple, you're right, at $500,000. But we're not talking about selling your house right now, you're talking to me about protecting your house right now. And so what happened is your kids came over, the, came over last weekend, and they said, hey, kiss grandma, on, on, uh, you know, kiss, kiss grandma and get out of here, because we need to talk to grandma and grandpa. Mom, dad, we're real concerned about you. We're worried if you get sick, but you could lose your house. So we have a great idea. Put the house in our name, and don't worry, we'll let you live there for the rest of your life. Never, ever put your house in your kids' names. Ever. Shelter is a primary need. Never lose it. And now I'm going to give you all the reasons why you should never, ever, ever put your house in your kids' names. Outright, giving it to them. So let's go back to my tax thing here. You have $250,000 of capital gain built into your house above your basis. If you give the house to your kids while you're alive, yes, five years later, it'll be protected from Medicaid. But if you give the house to the kids, you're giving them your basis. And if they sell it while you're alive or after your death, they get the $250,000 of capital gain. But what don't they get? they don't get your $250,000 exclusion. Why? Because it's not their principal residence. So you're causing them a tax of around 22%, or over $50,000 in tax. You don't want to do that. The second reason is, if you transfer the house to your kids, you're going to lose your star exemption, maybe your enhanced star exemption, senior exemptions, veterans exemptions, all your write-offs. That's the last thing you want to do is have your have your property taxes double overnight when you live here on Long Island on a fixed income as, as a senior. And the last reason, but people come to me and they say, look, Lawrence, I love my son. I trust my son. So I'll give the house to my son. Here, son, take my house. And the son is very happy about it, and everyone's very happy, and then the son dies. And now your daughter-in-law owns the house, and what's worse than that, she remarries a lawyer. 
Goodbye, Grandma. Goodbye, Grandpa. You're out. Never lose control of your house, period.